Hello, skateboarders. Welcome to TSM Live Show Season 5, Episode 5. I'm your host, Tommy Zam. This episode's guests are Aaron Gore, Tony Molino, music guest, Matt Electrician. You guys ready to get this show started? Let's do this. Yo, what's up, Tony? Oh, man. Hey, what's up? How you doing today, brother? Going pretty all right. Yeah? Looks like you went skating today, man. You look you're a little bit sweaty. You all right? Yeah, trying to be. It's pretty cool, getting it. Let's <laughs> get a little while. <laughs> so, so where you at right now? Uh, Louisiana, you know. Like Over what here. part? Monroe, Louisiana. Okay. How far is that from New Orleans? It's on the north. It's like probably about six, seven hours from uh, New Orleans. It's like probably about closest place is probably known as Shreveport. Okay. It's pretty dope. It's like uh, it's not much popping over here, but it's you know it's cool. Hell All yeah, right. hell yeah. So, um, <laughs> what got you into skateboarding? Was it like family members playing Tony Hawk video games or what? Uh, so there's actually this town in a way. Uh, there's not too much popping off here. Um, so there wasn't really too much I want to do, you know, like sports wasn't like, I remember trying out for basketball. I couldn't really do it. It's too small and stuff like that. It just didn't really work. So, uh, kind of long story, but I try to simmer it down just a smidge. So, uh, this dude like moves in from New York. So he's a sn like surfboard or something. No, snowboard. Yeah. And so I knew where these sand dunes were down here in Louisiana. So like, uh, we went sandboarding with his like surfboard or snowboard and dude craziest thing like we've been doing it for about a week now so we're getting good and like one day i just fell to the very bottom and hit something hard and it was like a skateboard deck it was a bam margera element skateboard deck yeah like in the sand and next day i just went to school and told some people they gave me like some hand-me-down trucks and bands and i kind of like low-key put them together and made up this little excuse to my mom that like I went to go skate, but since there wasn't really nowhere to skate, we'd walk this really, really like two miles in like the woods. And then there was this church on the other side. We'd skate and like smoke weed, but I, my board wasn't good enough to really skate on. So I couldn't go home because I was stoned. So I just like make an excuse for the skateboard. But then we would get like, you know, kind of into it because we'd get like stoned and be like, hey, this is kind of cool, you know? <laughs> And then it just, you know, kept going, kept going for like a year. And then there wasn't really nothing else to do, but still low key kind of sketchy because like over here, it's kind of gnarly. So smoking weed at a young age with like, you know, certain people can lead into like stealing and doing drugs, like, you know, real drugs and shit. And so a lot of my friends got into that, but then... I kind of met my dad for the first time around that age. Well, and, congratulations, yeah. dude. That's yeah, it's awesome. kind of cool. But he was like, he was in this other country, like Mexico and stuff. So uh, I went over there and it was crazy. He spoke English because he stays here in the U.S., but I didn't really know his whole background. But yeah. I just fell in love with like my village in Mexico. So am I talking too much, by the way? No, no, you're doing good. No, you're doing good, good bro. Okay, keep on going, man. You're doing awesome, man. <laughs> uh, so like... um. Yeah, it's this little tiny village and everything. And I'm in love with skateboarding. Like at this point, it's like the one thing that I got, but I don't speak Spanish, so I don't know anybody. And it's like, you know, my grandpa's like, we live off the land, like village, like 500 people in our village. We got a adobe house, you know, little tiny piece of concrete in one area. Like 
well, I'm there for like two weeks. I'm like, yeah, I like it. My dad like wakes up one day, like at four in the morning and dips out. There's a world of like, like Instagram, cell phone, stuff like that in this time, right? So like dips out to the US and here I am like with my grandma and grandpa in a village where we got to make fires just to take baths and like eat every morning. And I, it was so hard as a little kid, but I just kept trying to skateboard with the stuff I had in that little spot. And it was just like the one thing. And like a year goes by or something, he comes back. By this time I didn't like learn the whole, I didn't learn like everything about Mexico in the village, right? Like boom, I'm, but I still been skating. And I'm thinking, I'm gonna go back to US and like, cause I haven't talked to my homies at all, period. Yeah. I go back, man. And like, I try to go skating with everybody and they're just like putting on like, just the gnarliest drug missions and parties and nothing without skating. And it just kind of hurt my feelings. And I don't know, I just kept trying to skate, man, to myself and just found a whole new world. And that kind of introduced the reason to travel. Cause oh, like, yeah. you know, people in your perspective like that would skate so that's what got me into skating what kept me skating is a whole new story but <laughs> that's it oh, yeah, that's <laughs> awesome, man. That's, yeah, no, that's a great awesome story i mean because think about it i mean you know like you said you haven't you never met you just met your dad and you went to a whole different country that you didn't know uh, you knew about but you never met anybody and you didn't know spanish and everything and then your dad just dipped on you you're like well, I got skateboarding and, and I got family. So that's fucking awesome, dude. That's a, yeah. that's a great story, man. And that's, that's, oh, that's really good. And, and, and so it was, what's the skate scene like? I mean, I, I know you say like it, a lot of people out there, you know, in your town, it's very small and, you know, drugs and gangs and stuff like that go on in that, in their town and stuff. But you feel like skateboarding has more saved your life and got you away from that scenario? Well, all right, so this goes down to like beliefs and stuff. So like, I believe that you, if you, I don't know, if you're just strong-minded, like you'll save your own life in some kind of, like you're gonna f find art in anything or you'll find yourself being a victim in anything. And if you can find the art in anything, you will find something that will save you. So like, anyway, yeah, the skateboarding was that one for me. And uh, hold on, wait, what was the question again? I forgot. Basically saying like skate the skateboarding save you, you know, from away from the gangs and the drugs and stuff. Oh, like like yeah, it down, did. Down that way. It did because when I came over here, I wasn't really like I remember homies would talk to me about like when I got back, they'd be like, Yeah, let's go get some footballs and stuff like this. And I had no idea what drugs they were talking about. So I was in this world that I was stupid in. And then I remember like I would try to go try to drink with people and like I would get to the point where I wouldn't black out and just pass out. I would throw up and it'd be like the worst feeling of my life. I'd be like, please, I'd never drink again. You know? <laughs> While you're holding over the toilet, you're like, Bleh. Yeah, and I remember every single thing. I didn't even sleep, I was throwing up on it. And uh, so it just wasn't for me. And, um, but skating just, I mean, it's a personal battle. And I think like, I think like, you know, fighting and war all of that stuff i think it's instinct of a human to like actually fight that's who we are but i don't think you're supposed to fight other people i think you're supposed to spend your time fighting what you want to become and like these obstacles to get to it because if you think about it when you're having a personal battle for instance skateboarding you really don't have time or room to really like think of any negative parts of any other person or try to like be focused on damaging someone else or like someone being better than you or something like you're just trying to skate and get what you can do at that moment so basically yeah when you got a personal battle going on i think that's what it's about because after that you're either gonna win or you're gonna i don't know you can't lose you can't lose as long as you're trying something you want to do i mean dang <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of cool like uh, uh, so that kind of yeah. saved my life yeah and do you have like skate shops in your hometown and stuff or what well, like, not really. Um, there, we've been like building DIYs and stuff for a while, and there's like, you know, the mall stuff, and then like maybe like a little shop and stuff like that. But you know, like Zoomies rocks out; they do their thing. But uh, no, not really. Um, built like probably four DIYs, and they're pretty dope, man. Like, they're I, like 
I got my little YouTube channel thing going on on there. Like if y'all want to add an extra view or something, probably got, you know, that'd be tight. Uh, but yeah, like the first episode is like of me making a skate like ramp with a pipe and a bucket. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, cause I got this saying, I'm like, uh, creative minds don't wait, we create. And so anyway, I like build this little ramp, like all myself, you know, and then, uh, Two, like there's like four or five episodes of every episode like someone's extra is helping and then there's one where I get into like this motorcycle wreck and like get glass in my arm and it's all kinds of stuff on there but the last episode is like probably 20 people out there just helping everybody's just like picking up rocks bringing them people don't even skate bringing us tools like awesome. concrete coming in and just like it shows how passion you know like brought more value than just any amount of money like people were giving money like there was a point where i had more money in my pocket for the skate park than i did for actual lunch to go eat with everybody and i'm just wondering like how does the skate park make like this diy thing that doesn't even like have a job make more money than like someone who has a job yeah like and i started thinking about these whole things about like value and stuff and i was like I got this mathematical equation, man. It's so tight about value. You want to hear it? I want to hear it. Tell me about it. All right, all right, all right. So it's like, it's like uh, time plus passion equals value. So there's no amount of money that equals value. It's your time plus passion. That equals the value of any single thing. That's what I believe. So if you put value into something, it probably will make a lot of money. Just mm-hmm. saying. Yeah. No, that's, that's pretty smart, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty awesome, dude. And that's cool. Anyway, that's oh, cool. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. What were you saying? Uh, the conclusion of it was last story. So many people held this thing got built so big. Like it even started off with just like the first spot I put there. This homeless dude tore it down. We tried to fight him, but then we like thought about a different way. We were like, let's just bring him beer and a pizza, and ask for help. And that that worked. He like what? apologized. He, yeah, he apologized. He started helping. He ended up becoming the homeless dude who watched the spot and made sure no. And then we didn't even know how much concrete was there because it's just this little. I ended up getting a bit by a black widow that day too. Another story <laughs> is crazy. But like uh, it's just one little piece of concrete, and the more we kept digging, the more concrete it ended up being like two football fields of concrete. And we thought it was just like one little patch. Um, they anyway after that it got huge, and then city tore it down literally like yeah they tore it down then we built another one right across the river i showed you you know that little Mm -hmm. river that's another town so we built one over there under a bridge and it got huge like huge huge huge, so good and then city tore that down after a year then we built another one right across the street and that was really 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 good too i mean you could i got like i show stuff on instagram and everything (laughs) like that so you can see that but like uh I'm just, you, you asked, so I'm telling you, you know. Oh, you're good, bro. Like, you're good. Uh, it got super huge, too, and they just tore it down. And then low-key, I'm not really here permanently. I go to Mexico a whole bunch because of, you know, ever since then, i kind of been really in love with, like, where I come from. It explains a lot from who I am. That's why I was telling you, like, I think you're born with certain things. Like, you know, I definitely have the blood of my family and from Mexico, even though I didn't grow there, you yeah. know, like. Just drinking wasn't for me. Doing drugs wasn't for me. Like, I just, it's in my blood, probably. Like, some people can handle it better. Some people can't. But uh, I love it over there, man. Like, started going back. I moved to, like, the city of Mexico City. And uh, every now and then I come back over here and work on projects. But right now I'm working on a video project. So I ain't got time to build. Uh, <laughs> me and some people just be going out to the streets every now and then and trade clips working on projects oh, that's what yeah, i'm doing yeah. right now and, and you got you gave us a video tell us about this video we're about the watch so i was gonna show you some videos like you know they were all edited that my homie edited they were super 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 pretty but you know how they do copyright stuff <laughs> and uh yeah it's some raw stuff that like you know i had uh i didn't really i don't know just some random stuff i had man just uh like some things come from video parts, some things don't, but they're all accumulated within like the last year to probably like I don't know when did you when did I send this to you like last week? Something like that. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, it is all like from there. You, you ready to show the world your video part? 
呃，好啦，好啦，好啦。<laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Tony Molina's video part. Let's check it out. Yeah, was, thanks, man. That was cool. Appreciate it. That's dope. Take me back to that day of that loop, man. That was dope, dude. Well, the loop is actually probably one of the easiest things on that whole video. Uh, that's in Jackson, Mississippi, so it's not too far from here, like an hour. My homie built it, Dustin, dude, one of the best transition builders I know from. But anyway, that day. If you want to talk about a loop, that day is not the important one. The day I learned how to do loop, that was tight. Uh, it. It, was, it was in uh, 
it was a sheep side uh, in Hawaii mm -hmm. on the North Shore. So there's this DIY skate park over there. And yeah, I heard about it, didn't really know it was a thing. And then I went over there and like, just tried it. And you could actually like hold on to the top. So like when you do it, you can hold on so you don't like break your back or something and just practice it. And then when you feel confident, you can go for it. But it took me about a day. And then after that, you could do it every time. And uh, they built one a DIY like an hour away. So that was, that's the one you seen on the video, but the North shore was definitely more gnarlier, huh? <laughs> yeah. It was the first one. Like, didn't even know. It's crazy, man. Yeah. You probably hit it. You probably hit it the first time. You're like about to shit your pants. You're like, damn, dude. <laughs> nah, I've seen people do it. And like, they made it look so easy. Like, dude, believe it or not, like, a I knew people who couldn't even like, I mean, I ain't judging on skateboard. You know, everybody's different. That's the beauty of it. But like, just saying, some people couldn't even kick flip and they could do the loop. Like, just yeah. like, yeah, like when you got to figure it out, it ain't, it's, you just, you got to figure it out. Oh, I yeah. feel like almost like the heavier you, you are, the easier it might be. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and do you have spot? Who's your sponsors? Yeah, I got like a shoe sponsor. They're uh, Hey Dog Shoes. Okay. They're from uh, Mexico City. Or no, nah, like Mexico just in general country. And yeah. then Stay Turd, it's like a grip tape company. Okay. They're from Shanghai, uh, China. And then uh, Toxina Skateboards. That's like some of the boards back here. And there's a little poster over here, the wall ride. Okay. That I did on that video. So Let's see. There's a, oh yeah, there's wax company, uh, full sand wax. Okay. Yeah, actually, that's that's pretty dope because like if you notice on video, I do a lot of slides, and like um, I I'm, I'm really not that great skater. I just use what gravity. So like everything you seen was just gravity, like at its finest. But yeah, those are my sponsors. Okay. Cool. Cool. Hell yeah, dude. And then um. Couple more things. Uh, do you have uh, any like way people can watch your stuff? Like you say, you got a YouTube channel, Instagram, or anything like that. Yeah, well, I got like I got my personal YouTube channel, which I don't really post stuff about like crazy skating. It's kind of just like I don't know. I try my DIY thing, but then all the parts got tore down. But like, yeah, I definitely like uh, a lot of stuff is based out of Mexico because that's really where my skateboarding happens, like Mexico City and just around there. So like my Instagram, like Tone Molina. Uh, and then I guess just my real name is Tony Molina with a Y. So you can probably look up anything on YouTube with like Tony Molina Skateboard. I got these video parts coming out uh, for Toxina Skateboards. Okay. Uh, honestly, it's probably going to be one of the best it's probably gonna be one of the best uh, skate video for. Actually, it is because you know you kind of just progress and, and like if your body gets hurt, you just learn a different way to skate. So this one's yeah. gonna be different, you know. And I've been working on it for about a year now, and it has a lot of different places, and yeah. it'll come out in next month. And okay, uh, sure. yeah, like drop in magazines, stuff like that. They post it. I don't know. Probably don't make too much sense if you don't know what I'm talking about, but it'll be there. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah. you know. So, just, so it sounds uh, awesome. It sounds awesome. You have a lot of like good projects coming up, and you know, and I can't wait to see your video part with the uh, Toxine skateboards, man, because that's gonna be dope as shit, dude. Then send it our way, and we'll we'll help promote it for you guys, dude. Dude, thanks, man. And like, man, I appreciate you letting me be here and talk about uh, myself for a little bit. Uh, so <laughs> stuff and, and, hard. And, <laughs> <laughs> and one last thing, do you have anything you want to say to any upcoming skaters or anybody that that wants to have a dream like you had when you were growing up? Oh man, uh so all right. So I've been trying to just look at things in like little patterns and stuff. So I got this idea, you know, uh I told you earlier my mathematical equation for time plus passion equals value. Mm -hmm. So uh God, man, I didn't want to end this on a saying like this, you know, where it's like, because, uh, you know, I want to be like, all right, man. But all right, it don't matter. All right, I got you. All right, I got you. I'm going to do it anyway. All right, all right, all right. So here it goes. So it's like, if you love it, 
you fight for oh wait, 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 let me rewind. All right. Uh if you'll fight for it, then you got passion. And if you got passion, give it time and amazing things will happen. Oh yeah. Hold on, wait. Is that right? I don't forgot what it was. So basically, yeah, just give your feed your uh feed your passion and don't stop. It get hard, but if you don't feed your passion, stuff will get harder. So like, yeah, give it time and amazing things will happen. And don't oh, expect yeah. nothing because uh, if you expect it, then like, what's the fun in it? You know, then what are you creating? You got to create your own world that don't exist yet. You only exist right now. You don't exist tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. hundred percent true, brother. <laughs> well, cool, Tony. Well, thanks for coming on the show, man. You, you're definitely killing it. I'm looking forward to seeing your video part in a month. Um, and hey, just keep on doing what you're doing, brother. One oh, hey, hold oh, on, yes, one yes, more yes. thing, one more thing. Uh, so everybody can see that, dude. Uh, next time you go to San Diego, invite me, Matt. Well, you live there, right? You told me yeah. you live there, so hit me up, and uh, dude, I'll for sure go. I ain't hey, come on, dude. I'm gonna stay open for you, man. Yeah, man, I'll help you film some stuff, dude. I got a, I got a camera and all that stuff, man. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> next time y'all see me or something, I'll be, I'll be. Is that where you are on your camera? I'll be that way with him. You'll be that way with me, right here, right here. There, you there, there it is. You're pointing at me. <laughs> you. All right, homie. Well, have a good one, dude. Talk to you soon. Peace. Later, man. Peace. Later. Hey, Matt. How's it going? How you doing today, brother? I'm good. Hell yeah, man. Well, I just want to say this real quick. The first time I really met you, and I know we cleared it up that we're, we're exactly where airport and everything was mm -hmm. Austin, Austin, Texas, dude. And I, yeah. I, rem I remember I was flying from, I think it was San Diego to Tampa or Tampa to San Diego, one or two. And, and I remember I was just sitting there eating maybe Wendy's or something. And just I looked over and you're like over there in the airport just jamming out. And I was just like, dude, <laughs> this dude's awesome, man. This is like, I want to say it was like back in like 2004, 2005, somewhere around there. Yeah, um, yeah dude. And, and ever since, and then I walked up, we chatted for a little bit and, and then I bought your album Long Way Home. And, and I was like, I remember when I got in the car with my, uh, my ex-girlfriend at that time. And I was like, yo, dude, I just met this guy, dude, such an amazing voice, like popped it in there and, at first, she was like, eh. I was like, dude, I like this guy, dude. I'm like, I'm going to do other stuff. I'm going to follow this guy. But, but yeah, that, and I just want to say thank you for coming on the show, man. Like, you're, Absolutely. You're, your music's amazing, dude. Definitely is. Oh, thank you, man. Well, well, I'm ready to tell the people your story, man. So, you know, <laughs> you know, Matt Electrician, dude, like, there's, like, what got you into music? Um, I kind of just grew up around it. Uh, my folks had a big record collection and, and uh, my dad played in a, uh, my dad played in a band when I was a kid, he played uh, rhythm, rhythm, electric guitar in, in kind of a sixties rock cover band. What? Sick. And, uh, and yeah, so when I was a kid, we would just go, we, we would get to go see some of the shows that they played. Sometimes they'd let us like come in for the first set at the bar and then they'd, you know, Kick our, you mom, out. our moms would all, you know, you know, take us out, take us outside after, you know, for the second set, that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I just kind of grew up around around music, always wanted to play music. Um, we always had instruments in the house. Like we didn't always have money, but like whenever we had a little bit of money, my parents, my mom would my mom bought my dad a drum set for for Christmas or his birthday from a garage sale. Mm -hmm. And nobody in the nobody in the family played the drums. But we just had this drum set like in the middle of our living room <laughs> from awesome. like the, from like the time that I was five until I was nine. We just had a drum set in the living room. 
Um, so it was just stuff like that. There were guitars and pianos and um, I started playing trumpet when I was about five. My brother played saxophone and violin and what? We, we just always played music. Yeah, and, and I'm trying to vision you, like, you know, a, a mat electrician out there like five years old playing the trumpet and stuff, man. I'm trying to vision this. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> there, I mean, I, pl I played trumpet all the way, all the way through. Uh, I went to college and studied trumpet. That was kind of what I, I stuck with. Even when I was about 15 or 16, I started playing the guitar and writing songs and stuff. But but I stuck with the trumpet all, all through college. Dude, that's rad, dude. And then that's mm -hmm. awesome to have parents to influence you in a lot in music and everything like especially you know like you said you had your dad in the 60s band uh, cover rock band and and stuff like that i mean being around that that's that's very inspiring to to you and your and your whole family and stuff and everything and definitely like when did you start like realizing like you want to do you know music for for a career or not for a career but for for general <clears throat> public you know um, I mean, I, I, I think I, it just always made sense when I was a kid that like, well, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and my parents were always really supportive. Um, you know, kind of with all of us, my brother and sister and I, it was like, whatever you, whatever you want to try to do, go for it. You know? <laughs> and it wasn't like, I mean, you know, certainly in the grand scheme of things, we had some privilege, but, but we didn't have a lot of money really growing up. My mom worked a whole bunch of different odds and ends jobs. And my dad was a carpenter. He was a union carpenter on the West mm -hmm. coast. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it was just kind of like, look, if you want to try something, try it, work hard, see if it works. Yeah. Um, so, so music, it just, I don't remember a switch flipping later in life. It was just, you just grew up with this idea that like, sure, I can, I can try that. Maybe it won't work. Maybe I'll end up <laughs> you know, homeless or whatever. But, but I think also knowing that what my dad did um, later and, you know, w when I got out of college, I dropped out of college to join a band and it, it didn't really pan out. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I went and moved back home and, and worked with my dad for about a year doing construction. And I think that was another big piece is once you learn, like learning how to do something that you can do with your hands you know, I started as a carpenter's apprentice, but I ended up doing electrical and becoming a licensed electrician. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> once you learn something like that and you realize that, like, there's there's some difficulty when you initially learn it. But once you learn it, it's not that hard. And it's just hard work. It's just, you know, it's just buckling down and doing the work. Yeah. And um, and so once you do that for a while, you realize, like, oh, I can go back. I can do that whenever. So I'll go play some shows and try to make money playing music. And if it doesn't work, I'll just go wire houses or frame houses or, you know. Yeah. And, and, that, there. Yeah, and that's awesome you did that because, I mean, you always, like you said, you know, it's like a backup thing. You know, like you said, if you don't make money or, you know, what, you do play a show somewhere and then all of a sudden it's not what you expect it to be. And then you're like, you know what, I'm going to go do electrician work or I'm going to make my own money the other way. And that's a smart way to do it, you know. Yeah, as long as you as long as you're willing to work, it's, you know, and it's again, it's not to say I know that everybody doesn't have the same opportunities that I've had, but like, but doing construction, I mean, the, I worked with so many different, so many different kinds of people doing construction. Mm -hmm. And it's like the one common denominator is you're just not afraid to like put in a 12 hour day, you know, in whatever that entails. I mean, I, I, I dug ditches, electrician work, you know, sometimes it just means you're digging ditches. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've dug ditches in Texas in July and I did Ooh. it for a long time. And I, once you do a day of that, you do a 12 hour day digging ditches in the hill country in Texas in July. Oh. I'm like, I could do anything. I don't like now everything seems easy. Yeah, uh, ditch, ditches, digging ditches in July and in the South, any part of the 30 South, yeah. man, it's, it's, it's worse. If you've never been there, never lived in the 30 <laughs> South, you don't even know what it's like. True. <laughs> you got the heat, you got the mosquitoes, you got everything okay. coming at you, man. Yeah. And, and um, I read something, and I think it was like an interview or something like that a while back. I mean, you're 15 years old playing in coffee shops. That's that's pretty amazing, dude. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> sometimes I wonder now in retrospect, like whether it was a good or a bad thing. But like, I was pretty fearless. My along with the music, my brother and I did a lot of theater stuff. So we did plays and musicals, and 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 we were just interested in performing, like whatever that meant. So. Yeah. So it was, you know, there was, we both certainly had that thing where it was like, look at me, <laughs> like, I'm going to dance, I'm going to sing, like, I don't care. 
Uh, and I just wasn't scared to get up in front of people. And so when I started, when I started playing guitar and I taught myself like a couple songs and, uh, we used to go to this, uh, we used to go to this coffee shop when I was in high school after, after school to like, you know, drink coffee and smoke cigarettes and whatever. And, <laughs> and I remember I was sitting there and, and I didn't have, I wanted to buy a sandwich and I didn't have any money. And the lady behind the counter was like, well, we got a guitar over there. If you can play me a song, I'll give you a sandwich. And I was Whoa. like, right, shit, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so like I pulled the guitar down. I only knew one song. I knew this Beatles song, uh, Rocky Raccoon. And so I played it for her. And she gave me the sandwich and I was like, that's my, that's my first gig. Like, <laughs> I was like, that's cool. awesome. I mean, that, like, Hey, I get a free sandwich, play guitar. Yeah. Let's do it. Do you remember what kind of sandwich it was? Oh man. I wish I, I wish I did. It was, you know, it was probably a corned beef. I like corned beef. So that's probably what it was, but probably uh, a Reuben maybe, right? It might've been a Reuben. Oh man. But, Those but she, she said on the weekends, you know, we have shows sometimes. Why don't you come down? And, uh, and pretty soon I was playing there like once a week. And I only knew like a couple of songs, <laughs> but I just didn't, I didn't care. Like she gave me a gig and I had, I knew maybe three songs. And so I would, I would invite all my other friends in high school that played to come mm -hmm. down. So I had a, uh, a brother, sister duo. I would invite wow. my little brother down. I knew I was in band and orchestra and stuff. So I knew these girls that had like a little string. It was a uh, two string play. It was like a cello, no viola, violin, and a flute player and they would come down and like play like you know beethoven and shit it was what <laughs> but it was it was just like w what we would do on a sunday because like why not you know yeah dude that's awesome i mean that's awesome to do that and then you skateboard yourself too right and how, what yeah. got you into skateboarding was it music and skateboarding or what um no i mean skateboarding was like i lived in a in a in a different town in california and me and my best friend we both played baseball. We were really into baseball. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember. It was like kind of one day to the next. And it was in that, it was in that, um, I don't know if they call it like the second rebirth of, of skating. So it was like, you know, it had been big in the sixties oh, and seventies yeah. and then it kind of died off. And then like 80, 81, 82, it was starting to get big again. Yeah. And um, so we must've heard about it somewhere. And my dad made us, we had these metal roller skates and my dad was a carpenter. So he cut us out these like boards and then we just screwed these metal skate wheels to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And we would go into my friend's garage. And if you open the garage door, you could hang on to the, like uh, the lip of the garage door or the, the, the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. And we would just kind of practice like tic tacking. I mean, there's like terrible, you know, the metal wheels were like this far apart and in the middle of this like piece of plywood. Yeah. Um, so we skated on that for a little while. And then I think the first board I ever got, I found it was like in the, in the, uh, classified ad, somebody was selling a used vision ripper. What? That, like it was probably like a late seventies little, like it was kind of like a little board mm -hmm. and it was convex. So when you stood on mm -hmm. it, it was like, instead of it being concave, mm -hmm. it had like a little hill in the middle. Yeah. And I think it was like 20 bucks and I bought that. And by the next Christmas, my buddy and I both got like setups. That was like, we begged our parents and he got, he got a Lance mountain, uh, you know, whatever that board was with the like hieroglyphic. Oh, the Pal Peralta one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So this would have been like 83 or 84. And my first was the Steve Stedham Pal Peralta. Ooh, that was like the, he had like the dreadlock skull with the harder or the spade yeah. around it. Yeah. That was my favorite one too. That one oh, and, the, um, and the last Mount one with the, with the, um, the caveman or the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's like the hieroglyphic stick figure. Yeah. Dude. yeah. Those are my two favorite ones from back in the days. Yeah. So that was like our skates. And then we just go down to the school and you know, it was like all that early. You're just trying to figure out there were no videos yet. Cause like, I mean the first pal video, the first bones brigade video came out when we were like probably 83 82 or 83 i think so yeah but we didn't i feel like we didn't see that one right away but it was really you know you'd go to the skate shop and you'd look in the magazines mm -hmm. and they'd have the like trick things and but i just remember it felt like it took us forever just to learn how to ollie and all we would do is like we would just throw ourselves at the curbs like you just get on your board <laughs> <laughs> and you would just ride as fast as you could at the curb and then fall down until you could figure out how to like, 
you know, get over the curb, basically. Yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> was hours or, and hours of that. Yeah, I remember those trick tips in the magazines because we I used to study those trick tips and read them and stuff like that and then go out there and practice it and like, okay, oh, dang, I didn't get it. But I know what you mean when, when you first yeah. time Ollie, you always throw yourself to the curves, you know? And then it's all of a sudden, you know how it is, one, one day you just figure it out and you're like, oh, that's it. And then you, <laughs> your little brother's like, how do you Ollie? Like, I don't know, man. Just, <laughs> just figure just, it out. Just give him the trick tip. Here you go. Yeah. Read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's rad, man. And then, so you, so a little bit going back a bit. So skateboarding, you got into skateboarding and then music. So, so that you had a choice between, not choice, but you decided to go towards music more than a skateboard career or trying to go farther in skateboarding. You figured your love was more music, right? Well, yeah. I mean, and certainly like early in high school, all I did was skate. It's just all yeah. I wanted to do was skate. And and, you know, that first probably three years of high school, I skated, I skated for this sh uh, shop in Monterey, California, Sunshine Surf and Sport. So we were like mm -hmm. on the Sunshine team, which really meant that they like gave us a discount on wheels, <laughs> wheels and trucks. We got free t-shirts and stickers and like we got to kind of be the demo team when we would, they would do a contest. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so that was like, man, I loved, I loved skating so much, but. But by the end of high school, it was like girls and I started playing guitar and I was like, I get more girls playing guitar <laughs> and writing songs. And when I'm skating and I'm like not showering with my friends and like going to the ditch, like the, the girls weren't really as into it. So, but man, you know, we did this, we did a sunshine, sunshine surf and sport uh, contest at this place called Stillwell Hall. It was like this old... Uh, Monterey was a military town at that point, had a mm -hmm. military base. And it was something to do with the military base, this old parking lot and hall that was kind of abandoned. Mm -hmm. And they put on this contest and me and my buddies did like a little demo at the beginning. And there was a guy that was at the next town over in Salinas at the mm -hmm. high school uh, named Justin Gerard. And he came over and was like doing these crazy wall rides that we had like never seen just like straight off the ground like riding the walls we're like whoa what's this guy doing and that same contest i'm not even kidding the same contest from up in san jose ray barbie and eric torres showed up oh no and so those three guys were like at our contest and we were like doing a little demo we're like check it out like i can do a you know a frigid air off the launch ramp and then ray barbie's doing just straight up like Ollie kickflips off of the launch ramp. And you're like this, whoa! Just blowing everybody's <laughs> mind. Like, yeah. <laughs> hey, at least you got to skate with Ray Barbie, right? <laughs> I know. A brief moment, yeah. That's rad, dude. That's so rad. And then I'm going to go a little bit up a little bit. So in yeah. 1996, you finally broke into the Austin, you know, Texas music scene. How was that? How'd you do that? Well, I just moved. I moved to Austin in 96. That was... Uh, I'd been living up in Oregon and parts of California before that. And uh, mm -hmm. I just put everything in my car and drove to Austin. Uh, I had kind of heard some rumors that it had a cool music scene, but you know, this was like pre everything. So no internet, no cell phones. I, it really was like a friend of mine told me like, Oh, I've Austin, I've heard Austin's pretty cool. And I was like, cool. I'm going to put everything in my car and just drive. <laughs> so you had like a, you had a dollar in your ha hand and, and a full tank of gas, he just drove across country. Totally. I stopped in San Francisco, and I spent all the money I had saved. I, I hung out with a buddy there that I used to skate with, and then uh, and then I ended up doing some construction jobs there and made a little bit more money, and then and then drove the rest of the way. <laughs> and what was it like? I mean, when you find you're coming from California and going to Austin, that must have been like kind of like a nerve breaking culture shock a little bit, or what? It was a little crazy, but. You know, right off the bat, I had to get a job and, and kind of figure out how I was going to pay for stuff. So I started working for an electrician mm -hmm. and uh, it really, from one day to the next, we were doing six days a week, 12 hours a day, like just week in, week out. And, uh, and it was so hot and I didn't have air conditioning in my car. And so it, I, I feel like I, I kind of like did the, the you know, what, what, when they, th when they throw you in the water to teach you how to swim, you know, it mm -hmm. was like sink or swim. Um, so, so within a couple of weeks, I felt pretty adjusted to the, to the, 
culture and the and the the, the weather and just all of it. And I was just, I was working so much because it was booming then. I mean, Austin's kind of always booming, but yeah. they were building so much and so many people were moving here. So we were always busy. Like we would work the six days and on, come into the shop on at the end on Saturday and they go, anybody want to work Sunday? <laughs> so, <laughs> you're looking like, like you, this. You're like if this. <laughs> you, yeah, if you wanted to, you could work like 80 hours a week. And uh, so I was trying to like do that. Plus like at night, after getting off of like a 12 hour day, I would like go to these open mics and try to like play a couple songs and, and bust into the music world. And that was actually how the name kind of came about. Cause I, I didn't have time to shower between, <laughs> between work and like show. And you know, it's like, you, it, it's no joke. Like we would be at, crawling around in attics where it was 140 degrees and you would, sh I'd show up just gnarly and I'll go, look, I'm really sorry but I'm an electrician and I just, I'm all, I'm dirty and I'm sweaty. I'm covered in insulation. I'm just going to try to play a couple songs. That's awesome. And so that's, yeah. that was one of my questions is how you got your name up, but that's yeah. pretty awesome. Like, so everybody just started calling you Matt electrician is like after that or what? Kind of. I was, I was with a buddy who was trying to convince me to call myself. He goes, you should call yourself Matt the electrician. I said, that's a stupid idea. And, uh, we were like having lunch at this place and, uh, like on a Sunday. And while we were talking, some guy comes up to the table and he goes, Hey man, you're that electrician guy. Right. And I thought like, maybe I worked on his house or something. I go, yeah. And he goes, Oh, my son and I saw you at this nightclub the other night playing a tune. And I said, Oh, okay, cool. He didn't remember my name. He didn't remember Matt, but he remembered the electrician. So <laughs> all right. I know. Like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna go with that. What, what yeah. was what, how, when you did your before Matt Electrician, you just used your full name when you went up there, right? Yeah, okay, cool, cool. That's pretty rad. I mean, just to know like your history a little bit and stuff, and it's just to know that you know, come from California to go into Austin to break into the Austin music scene, and that's a hard thing to do because I mean, this like the music scene is pretty big in Austin, you know. I mean, you got yeah. what the <laughs> X S X S W or something like that. I can't remember the right. point of that. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of good musicians that come out of there and go there, you know. I yeah. haven't been there, but I heard it's called you know, that they, they, people call it like the mini New York City, you know, it's just yeah, yeah. so much culture there, and that's pretty rad, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of music here. It's great. I mean, the best part about Austin has always been the music community. So uh, it, it's it's in a way like like Tony was saying this about kind of the skate world, and I've always appreciated this about skateboarding is that it's is that skateboarding you're not ever really competing against anybody. Like even if you're in a contest, like it's not like baseball or basketball or whatever. It's like you're competing against yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And if you go to LA and try to make it in the music business, you're competing against people because it's a business. And in Austin, it was a music community. There was no business. There's no business here. There's no like record labels. There's no, you know, big publishing houses. So it's just more like people love playing music here. And it's not like everybody's trying to get gigs, but you're also, when I first got here, you'd spend so much time like just playing with other people. It was just people wanted to play. Everybody wants to play here. Yeah. So in that way, it's a lot like the skate scene where, you know, you can go to any park in the country and by and large, I mean, every once in a while you run into a couple of dicks, but, but by and large, like everybody's just in it to like skate, you know, it's, yeah. it's, you're doing it because you love doing it. And it doesn't matter if you're, you know, I'm all, I'm, I'm about to turn 50. And it's Hold like, on, you're I, about to 50? You don't look yeah, 50, man. I've, yeah. I've been at parks where it's like, there's young guys, you know, like, they're like, all right on, old man. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking about 35, man. What are you talking about, <laughs> man? I'm going to have to move to Austin, man. <laughs> 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 no, but that's right. No, it's true. It's true. Definitely what Tony said and what you said, it, it's definitely 100% true. I mean, yeah, everybody wants to go to California to or New York to, because it's it's music and skateboarding and surfing and whatever <laughs> you know. It's it's just that's where everything is. But going to like Austin or going to, you know, anywhere else that uh, has a com music community yeah. or skate community or whatever, it helps out a lot for what you and me are doing or whatever other people are doing. It's hundred percent true. Yeah, totally. And, it, and you gave us this song that we're about to uh, jam out to, man. Tell us oh, about sweet. it. I, which which one did I'm, I'm blanking? Oh, man. I, 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 uh, I don't remember the name of it. Uh, oh, was it the videos, you mean? Yes, the videos. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Probably Big Changes. 
I think it's big changes. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little about it. Uh, well, it's from it's a song from from a, a new record that came out late last year, and uh, I made it up in Portland, Oregon, with Tucker Martin, who's a really great producer who works with a lot of uh, a lot of indie rock bands like the Decemberists and Nico Case and Sufjan Stevens and stuff, and also works with a lot of jazz folks like Bill Frizzell and Wayne Horvitz and okay. uh, a guy that I've really looked up to for a long time. And so we made a record together and, uh, and this song is, it's, it was kind of a story, it, you know, it, it's a little bit about the idea that everything, you know, the world's falling apart. The world is on fire. Uh, you know, it's, everything's getting hotter and, and terrible, but it's like, whenever there are changes, whenever things are evolving, it's like it might be a an evolution that's not good for you, mm -hmm. but it might be good for something else. Like, <laughs> you know, like, like I just I, my my wife's family does a lot of backpacking. And so every year we go on like a family backpack trip and a very mm -hmm. off grid, you know, super kind of survivalist, hardcore family. And uh, and I, I wasn't raised that way. So it's kind of me dipping my toe in that. But walking around and you're out in the middle of, of nowhere in this nature and you're like, man, like birds and like birds and mosquitoes, like birds and trees are going to be so psyched when we're not here. <laughs> <laughs> not mosquitoes, not mosquitoes. Not mosquitoes. <laughs> well, mosquitoes will figure out something. They'll, get, they'll go get like deer or whatever. They'll, but, they'll bite us to get us out of there. <laughs> yeah. But I think, you know, it's like, it's, it, it, when things are changing, it's, I'm, I'm always curious about, the bigger changes and then like the micro changes and how that all kind of works together. And so, so anyway, I wrote a song that kind of va vaguely deals with that. And then the video is, is very goofy. Um, Wes Anderson inspired slash uh, family backpacking trip footage. <laughs> Are you ready to check it? Totally. All right, let's do it. Matt like Patrician right, right here. <laughs>
<laughs> I love the dude. I love, I love the, the the Boy Scout look, man. <laughs> yeah, that was I. Uh, in the, I I made that video by by myself during the pandemic when my wife and son were out of town for like a month. And I was like, oh, I'll make a video. It'll be easy. And it took me like the whole, the entire month to like make that video. <laughs> hey, by the way, how are you feeling, man? I know you told me you got had COVID. You okay? You're good? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I had it. I, I, I was on tour last month for uh, about three weeks out on the West Coast and, and didn't get it. Like, and then right at the end of the tour, got it while I was driving home. Or I don't know when I picked it up, but, mm -hmm. um, but it's, but yeah, it's been like, uh, I don't know, 17, 18 days now. I'm, I'm feeling good, 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 good. Yeah. Well, you, you got your smell, you got everything good and, and stuff. Yeah, like none that. of that, none of that ever went away. Uh, it was, it was just kind of a, like a bad cold fever, okay. fever cough, all that, but <clears throat> yeah. So I put, I put positive thoughts out there for you. I raised it up for you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. But no, it was a great song. And, um, your, some of your songs, like I Remember Got Your Back and, and a couple other ones have appeared in film shows and commercials. I mean, mm -hmm. congratulations on that. I mean, how oh, does right. that make you feel? Uh, I mean, it's always it's always nice. And uh, and and often there's money that goes along with it. So that's even, you know, that's an extra nice thing. <laughs> and so and how they find you? Do they like listen to your albums or do you send a, a song to them? Think maybe it might be a, a good thing for them or something mm -hmm. or what? It's always kind of different. I mean, I have some people over the years that I've that I've kind of hooked up with that that pitch stuff like that to for movies or TV or commercials. Um, so some of the things I've gotten have been that way. And sometimes it's been pretty random. Yeah, it'll be somebody that works at an ad agency is just a fan of the music. And so they'll reach out to me. Oh, that that's was, awesome. That was the case with with uh, Got Your Back. Dude, that's awesome. Congratulations on that. And a couple more questions. Um, yeah. What's your albums like Home 99, Long Way Home that we first met in 2004, uh, Made for Working 2003, et cetera, et cetera. I, me personally, I love all your songs and I'm always trying to think. And, you know, when I listen to music, I always try to see if there's something that has happened in their lives or something. Go to it. And there's a lot of songs like Sad Lisa Waltz, um, et cetera, et cetera. But for Sad Lisa Waltz, what's the meaning behind that? What what made you write that song? Because it was a beautiful oh song, God. by the way. <laughs> I oh, Sad Lisa Waltz. Yeah, that, gosh, I have That's a very old song. Um, I think that had to do with I had a friend. Well, first of all, like for years, I I play these like songwriting games. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, so. I've done these, a, a buddy of mine who's a local musician here in town, Bob Schneider, has this songwriting game that's like through the internet. So he'll send out a title. And then every week, everybody that's in the game, you like write a song and send it, oh, it. send it in uh, to the to the whole group. And so everybody writes a song using whatever the title, you just have to use it in the song. There's It doesn't have to be the theme or whatever. But um, so I did this, I've done this game with Bob for like 20 years and I have a game of my own. And then we used to do a live one at shows, my buddy Southpaw and I. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the night, we'd ask the audience, like, what's the title for next week? And so they would yell out, you know, whatever. And one week it was Sad Lisa Waltz. And so that was like, <laughs> that was the title. So I just had a week to write Sad Lisa Waltz <laughs> and then and then bring it back. Um, that being said, I usually end up tying it into something that that is more real to me. Um, and I think in that particular situation, I have a friend, I had a friend at the time named Lisa, mm -hmm. whose boyfriend had like broken up with her, like kind of abruptly, and she wasn't expecting it. And he was already seeing somebody else. And so I was, that song was kind of for her, like it was about like Lisa, and kind of her boyfriend had already left her, but hadn't told her about it yet. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And then you had another song too, California. I like that song a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and the meaning behind that one that was just about your childhood living in california and stuff or what um that one was kind of about you know there's i've always felt there's you're from california right yeah i live out there yeah yeah um i was born there and then i've lived a bunch of other places and my folks moved around a lot when i was a kid so i i lived in oregon a bunch of different towns in oregon and a bunch of different towns in northern california and and then i've been out here in texas for 26 years um but when you travel around it's like everybody loves california like they love the idea of california you know they love 
going to the beach or Disneyland or LA or, or, uh, you know, if you go all the way back to, to the gold rush and, and, or in the Dust Bowl era, you know, in the depression, mm -hmm. people like escaping to California, right? It was the land of milk and honey. Yeah. And so there's all this art that is made about California and about it's this, it's this magical place and this land, which is great. But then if you move somewhere else in the country and you tell people you're from California, they're like, why don't you go back? To, like, get out of our town. We don't like you. Like every people all over the country are like really down on people from California moving there because there's this perception that we're all from LA and we all have a lot of money yeah. and we're the reason that their town is being ruined. And Austin, Austin certainly, you know, has changed a lot and there's a lot of money here now. And so there's this narrative that it's, it's because of it's Californians faults, you know, <laughs> we, um, we get the blame, right? <laughs> totally. <laughs> And I always, I always thought it was a funny kind of contradict, like juxtaposition that like, on the one hand, everyone wants to come to California and kind of like have all of our things, the, the mm -hmm. beach and the, and the, you know, the weed and the margaritas <laughs> and the California yeah. burritos and everything, you know, totally. <laughs> but then you don't want it coming to your town. Like if you live in Nebraska, you're like, please don't move here. I don't want you to, you know, um, so that no, song, I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. So that song was kind of about that. Like it's a, it's a, it's a weird it's a weird thing for us as humans to be super regional and territorial when it's like, we've only been here for a couple hundred years and we stole all of it anyway. Like, why are we? <laughs> it's true. No, it's true. It's definitely true. And then um, couple, two more, one more question. Um, where can people find your music? What platform they can go to? Do you have a website, social media, what? Yeah. I mean, the best, the best thing is just mattheelectrician.com. There's links to everything. You know, I've got a band camp, which, which is where I sell a lot of stuff. And, and obviously in this age of streaming, you can stream all of my stuff at all the streaming places. Um, but if you want to buy things, you can go to the band camp page. That's great. And then, you know, I'm on Instagram. I occasionally post like some really lame skateboarding tricks. I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to get tired skateboards to like, to like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe not sponsor me, but at least like, at least like, you know, re retweet one of my, uh, one of my things. But so far, I don't think I haven't, I haven't found the right trick for him. Yet, so. <laughs> well, may maybe I'll, maybe I'll pull some magic for you. <laughs> yeah. I, need, I think, I think what I need to do is like a super slow-mo Russian boneless over a hip or something. That's there what, you I, go, dude. That's that's what I'm what hoping I, for. I might get it. And yeah. then uh, what, your last question of the day is, uh, what can you say to the upcoming um, musicians, anything inspiring words, anything you want to say to them? Oh, you know, the, the bottom line, I think that I've learned after all these years is, is, uh, is absolutely prioritize having fun and, and, and doing what, what you, what you enjoy and what you love. And it doesn't have to be your job and you don't have to make a lot of money and you don't have to win <laughs> anything, but it's like, you know, more good things will happen in all those other realms. If you mm -hmm. do, if you, you know, if you do what actually makes you happy instead of trying to do what you think is the cool thing or the hip thing or, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a that's, hundred that's percent true, man. Yeah. And, and Matt, thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely. Um, thank your, you. Tom. Your music's amazing. Always, always love listening to it when I'm driving around stuff like that. And, and Very people nice. please go out. So support to Matt. He's definitely killing it, dude. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you so much, Tommy. All right, guys. Coming up next, Aaron Gore. Be ready. I'm Dan Mancina. I've been riding Bone Swiss for over 10 years. They're the fastest, longest lasting, best skate bear you can get. So ride the best, forget the rest. What's up, Aaron? What's up, dude? That dude kills it, huh, Dan? That yeah, dude, Aaron, dude. Yeah, Have you ever skated with him or seen him skate? Nah, but um, it looked like a lot of those spots were in Michigan, where yeah. I'm originally from. Is that? Oh, is word, word. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I seen my Tampa pro skating the courses out there. He definitely kills it, man. Hell yeah, yeah, he's crazy. 
Well, hey, man, you, you, you did a day in the life with us. You, you ready to check this out? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> what's, what's premiere this day in the life? All right, guys. Aaron Gore's day in the life. Here it is. Oh, shit. Yo, yo, in the old noodle phone with some, uh, some Call of Duty and revitalizing my, oh, should be a pretty mellow day. My knee's all jacked right now, I'm waiting on some MRI results, so won't be doing any skating, but probably go down to the tattoo shop that I work at, see if I can get some little fillers if anyone's available, and then probably get some coffee and get some lunch at uh, my favorite Italian deli, Cugino's and then come back to the crib, maybe make some music or something. We'll just see where it takes us. This is the man cave studio, or as we call it, the slap factory. What's up, you watching last night in the slap? Oh yeah, we are. Right. I can't help it, I'm just keeping it playing. Yeah, I'm making a lot of chicken and I'm keeping the flavor. Born and raised in California, told to fly out to Vegas. And if you're looking for the dopest in the city, then my crew the latest. Always when I'm filming this, or trying to do something important, this fucking thing. It's all crackling and shit. Oh shit. This thing's old as fuck, but they don't make them like this anymore. This thing runs like a champ. This thing's got my whole life on it pretty much. I use it as my backup, uh, cause these older machines, they just, they keep running, you know? They don't, they don't really ever break. What the fuck? Fuck. Yo. Never seen it do that. Uh, uh, I should probably turn this thing off. Should be fine. Just let it cool down for a little bit. I'm gonna try to see if uh, anyone's got time to do a little filler tattoo, maybe. It's fucking windy today. It's my pride and joy right here. It's been about a year. Living in Vegas, moved out here from Arizona. Vegas has been pretty sick. It's like pretty much Arizona, but way more shit to do. Oh shit. About to hit mothership, grab some coffee. Go. Just got to the shop. Yo, yo. What's up? What's it going? Trying to find something pretty small to fill a spot in. You don't do some like little cherries or cherry skulls or something? Did you know that dude's drink over last night? <laughs> oh remember? fuck, I forgot about that completely. He's so mad. Oh, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know how he could be that mad about it. It's, it's like probably because the drinks are like $30. A little, uh, little painful, but not as bad as I thought for the ditch. Check it out. Yeah. Just got done with the tat. And it's dusty as shit out right now. What's up? Yeah, kind of just a little day in the life thing for, for YouTube. It's a little short film. Oh, you it's won't a, ever see it. Is it on the internet? Uh, yeah. Yeah? What's it called? Uh, you won't ever see it. <laughs> no, that's the name of it. You oh, won't really? Ever see it. Oh, sick. Like a little, yeah. Oh, you know, they got traction. I'm like, how can I make that happen without that money? <laughs> right. Oh, okay, here we go. Go. Ah. Yeah, I feel you, you got to innovate. Gotta find a way to make it happen. Yeah. Just pulled up to Cugino's, homemade mozzarella, prosciutto, a little bit of oil on top. Magnifico. As well. Two sandwiches and this is like. Yep. That's gonna be uh, it. For here or to go? Ah, uh, to go, please. 
Bada bing. Secured the bag. I'm back to the crib. Let's get it. All right, let's check this bad boy out. Woo. Yes, sir. Mm. God damn. Back in the, the slab factory. Gonna try to make a little track with Caleb here, aka Yumso. Little bro. Little man, say hi to the camera. He thinks he's pretty cool. <laughs> Post Maloney hot rock. You want some hopscotch rock? Is that what you want? I want some hop emo scotch. We're gonna make some hopscotch rock. Ready? <laughs> well, I'm tired. <laughs> uh, we did our best. It's been a long day. It's been a fun day. I think uh, that might be a wrap. Cut it off right there. That's a wrap, brother. That's a wrap, brother. Yeah, Aaron. <laughs> I love that, dude. That was a dope, dope uh, day in the life, man. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it was fun. We had to make the best of it because can't skate right now. Finally got the MRI results back. Are you good? What did they say? Got to get a little surgery, but it's not. It's nothing like too crazy. I had like a similar surgery when I was seventeen, so shouldn't be oh, too bad. Shit. What'd yeah. you do? Wow. What happened? I like just kind of tweaked it a little weird. It was weird too because like I tweaked it and it hurt for like a couple days. And then it, I went on a trip with uh, Kushner, the one who filmed the documentary. We went to Costa Rica and I skated the whole time. Didn't really bother me that much. And then I got back and I like didn't skate for a week because we were doing some other shit. And it just started locking up out of nowhere. Like I was like, what is going on? And I started feeling like these little like, like balls of like floating things like popping up under the kneecap. And like, mm -hmm. if I would like bend my knee, like shoot, like up into my thigh. Oh. And I was like, that doesn't feel right. And uh, <laughs> like, I gave it like a couple weeks, like, because I have like shit like that with my knees all the time. And yeah. uh, usually it'll just go away and it didn't go away. So I ended up getting the MRI and um, they said I got like some floaters in there, whether, whether it's like cartilage yeah. or bone. And then they got to drill little holes in the knee. And, uh, but like they said, it could be a week recovery time or it could be like a couple months, just depending on how it goes. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see. Well, I, I put positive vibes out there for you, man. Hey, appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but dude, that day in the life was sick, dude. So let me ask you, I love the computer thing. Does that actually really happen or was that like a little trick thing you guys did? Yeah, it's a little, you know, it's a little movie magic. Oh, okay. The magician okay. never reveals his tricks. So. <laughs> yeah, I we're just trying it, to make dude. it fun, make it entertaining, you know. I, I love it, dude. I was laughing my ass off. Like, <laughs> that's dope. And your whole face like, oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> That's rad, dude. And so what what got you into skateboarding? Um, I was always when I was younger, I like my dad was super into sports and stuff. So he had me like kind of getting started real young on everything. Like before I could walk, I was like playing hockey and football and I pretty much played like every sport and I was pretty terrible at all of them. Like <laughs> noticeably noticeably bad to the point where like I played hockey for like five years and then uh I'd never made a goal. And when I finally made a goal my coach was so stoked that he came and he brought me the, the, the puck, like, in a trophy. He's like – and it had, like, a plaque. It's like, Aaron's first goal. And I was like – I was like, that that's really nice to you. But at the same time, I was like, I think it's time to quit. Like, if it's, like, that big of a deal, like, five years in, like, okay. And then um, basically uh, I was – I think I was, like, rollerblading a lot just kind of, like, because I would do roller hockey. And then my dad, like – he, uh, we had a shed back at our house in Michigan and they, and they like knocked it down mm -hmm. and he used all the extra wood 
to build like all these sketchy ramps in the backyard. We had like it chained off and I would like roll the blade around on it and shit. It was like our own little private like DIY thing. And uh, one day my older brother, um, he had a skateboard. Um, it was a, a graphic skateboard. Like it's like mm-hmm. a, they make like those posters that go in head shops and stuff. Um, oh yeah, I know what about. Yeah. It's got like a clown, like it had like this, it was a blackboard. It had like a clown on it. And uh, we got it from my dad's head shop like that he owned. And my brother was about to trade it to a, um, a neighbor who had a scooter. He's like, I'll trade you. I was like, no, let me get it. And he's like, all right. And he gave it to me and I just started messing around on that. And that pretty much was, I just kind of, I was doing both for a while, like rollerblading and skateboarding and playing sports. I was like rocket power vibes. <laughs> and then uh, just kind of like it all, the stars aligned to the point where it was just like, ah, I think I can stop that other stuff. I'm going to just do this instead. It, you, you, you realize fruit booting wasn't the greatest thing to do, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. like, the fruit boots got to go. <laughs> yeah. But hey, at least you saved your brother from being a scooter, man. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> And then, so you grew up in Michigan, correct? Yeah, I lived in Michigan till uh, 2007. So I was like 12 years old. And mm-hmm. uh, I just like got back to my house one day after school. And my dad was like, hey, uh, buddy, we sold the house and we bought an RV. Uh, we're going to travel the country for the rest of your life. Like, that's cool, right? And I was like, shit, I guess so. <laughs> and so we got in the RV. They pulled us out of school. And my mom started homeschooling us for like um, for the year and like, we made our way from Michigan to Arizona and then we just like parked in like near Scottsdale, Arizona at this like RV place. And they're like, I think we're just going to live here. I was like, Oh, <laughs> well, I saw some of the country, I guess. Like, and then we bought a house out there. My parents did and um, just lived in Arizona all the way up until uh, last February. And then me and my girlfriend, she's from Vegas. So uh, she has family out here and stuff. And she came out here, got her real estate license. And then um, we got a place and it's been cool. Oh yeah! Congratulations! I, I saw that you got a new house, man. Are you stoked? Yeah, yeah, I'm super stoked, man. It's gonna be sick. It's like right, um, right downtown, pretty much, like wa- almost walking, or pretty much is walking distance to uh, like Fremont Street, the old strip. Are you gonna have a nice little skate park in the back, or what? Maybe we'll see. It, it's got like a little, like nice little garden area and like a seat <laughs> and stuff. So we'll probably just leave the skate park for for the next house or something. But there you go. Cool. There you go. Yeah. And so growing up in, I know, you know, not growing up, but like living in Arizona, I mean, so were you associated with Cowtown Skate and all those guys? Yeah, all my homies like are Cowtown people. Um, I started going to Freedom Board Shop first because uh, I was more in that area and um, I, I ride for Freedom. Um, and uh, but then when I started hanging out in Tempe more, because that's where a lot of my, my friends were at. Um, always going in Cowtown and stuff. Everyone that works there is the homie. And yeah, Cowtown's sick. Yeah, one of our, actually our editor, uh, Tim Vask. Um, oh yeah, no, you, tell, you told me to tell you, so what up? Sick, what up Tim? <laughs> he, he's, he's probably gonna, he's gonna be editing this, so he'll hear all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, that, so that's, so Arizona is where you got more into skateboarding. That's where you got your sponsors and everybody start noticing who you are and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, because like back in Michigan, I had a friend who um, his parents owned um, like this giant, they, they started and like ran this like humongous indoor skate park. Um, and I didn't know him when they started it, but I was just like at my house one day. My dad's like, I think I saw like a sign for a skate park that like, takes me by. And, I'm, and this is why I'm still rollerblading, too, but I have my board with me, too. And uh, you like stop by and it's just like an empty skate park. Nobody's there because it's like brand new, opened up and uh and that's like where I started skating. We I like met the owners, kids and stuff. And we had like our own little group. We'd film all these videos, like put out like weekly edits and stuff and like got super into the the culture of just like skating, creating with our friends, doing all that stuff. But then once I moved out to Arizona, that's where I met like the people that got me a little more serious into it and like started street skating and stuff because we were pretty stuck in the skate park realm back in Michigan. Yeah. Um, so definitely like Arizona is where I kind of got noticed or whatever and started taking it serious. And, and, and so how'd you get on Welcome? How did that happen? Um, pretty sure was after my friend Diego's video, I had a part in that and um, Chris Millick had a part in it and um, Will Blady had a part and um, he, Chris sent it to Jason. He was like, Hey, like we made this video. Like, do you want to, you know, check it out or post any of the clips or whatever. And then, I think he either mentioned our names or Jason, the owner of Welcome, was like, 
it's like, oh, who's that Will and Aaron? Who are those dudes? Like, um, I want to send them some boards and then just started sending boards. So that's kind of how that happened. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and, and Wilkum sent me a, 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 one of your, your pro board. Oh, dude. sick. Oh, yeah. You know, so, I mean, definitely it's a dope board. And, and you know, actually, I had it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it's a dope board. And, you know, I want to say congratulations being pro, man. How's that feel? It's it's nice, man. It'd be uh, even better if I could actually skate right now. But, <laughs> but you know, like it's it's cool. Like it's always you know a goal for everybody. Obviously, it's like I, I feel like I finally um, reached that that goal. That's like yeah. that was one of my goals. And like on the on a, like the other side, away from skateboarding, it's like I'm still obviously going to be putting it all into skating and stuff. But like I have like all these like video and music like goals that I'm trying to achieve as well. So it's like. I can still do that and have fun with skating, film parts and all that. But now it's like I'm able to, like, justify being like, okay, like I can, you know, get these. Like me and my friends are trying to like write a little. We've been writing skits and stuff, trying to do um, a little like YouTube comedy show and like um, I make a lot of music with with friends and stuff. And I'm hoping my girl's brother will work on his like debut album, the one in the video. Yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, man, it's been cool being pro. Like it's definitely fucking accomplishment for sure like makes it feel yeah. good yeah and, and and so what so are you so you for you going a little bit back so your music so you're basically like the producer you produce all everybody's music and everything so um when i finished when i got out of high school my parents were like um wanted me to go to college they're like but we want you to go and do something that like you're gonna use or you like enjoy and i was like well can't think of anything and then i had a friend who was like i'm gonna go check out this college that's like about music production so I went down and checked it out and I was under the impression that it was like <clears throat> how to make beats and stuff like that. But it turns out it was a, like an audio engineering school. So like they teach you like the whole thing of like behind the big consoles and like mixing and setting up mics and all that. And at first I was like, I don't know anything about this. Like, I don't know if this is really like my cup of tea. Um, but then like after I just, I was like, you know what? It actually does seem pretty cool. Like I'm, I'm going to just give it a try. And, um, so I got certified as an audio engineer and then what? that like got my start. Like, so I was like doing a little bit of mixing and stuff and then able to make my own music. And I kind of just started like, I would make beats and I didn't know any rappers. So I'd be on a skate trip and like on all the pyramid country skate trips, like I'd just be like, all right, who's going to rap on this beat? And I would like find like <laughs> the person who looks like least likely like the dude that's in the corner, like this or whatever. And I'm like, right, you're on the track. like start writing. And then I'll get them on and like it was a good practice for me because like you take somebody like they can barely they're like don't even know how like they can barely even follow a rhythm sometimes. And then I have to go in there and I have to chop it up and like auto tune it and do this. So it was like a really good practice to like hone my uh, engineering skills. And um, and then like I would be getting on the tracks with them too and stuff. And it, it's all like for fun, like just like it's cool, too, because like each trip they would come back. I mean, the first ones, everybody's like, oh, look. No, I don't want to get on track. All right, I guess I'll get on track. And then the next trip, they would come back and they'd be like, I have, I have bars written. Like, I'm ready for the track. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, and it was like cool because you got to see like people who aren't musicians. They had no intention of being a musician, like getting yeah. the joy that you get out of that. Like, it was yeah. really cool. Like, they, they're all like putting on the headphones and they hear like the auto tune and they're like, oh, shit. Like, the the valve like, in their heads, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's sick it's super that's, fun though man yeah I love that's, that's so rad dude I'm, I'm so happy for you man like thanks man you know your day in the life you a little bit about your history getting into music i mean you, you, you're doing great dude definitely thanks man i appreciate nice. it just trying to have fun and like pursue every uh everything that i'm interested in i'm just trying to like go and you know at least get something out of that get some joy out of it learn some things and yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And then, so what do you have coming up for? You know, I know you're recovering from your um, surgery and all that stuff. So, do you have anything else planned for 2022? Um, hopefully, it's a quick heal on the knee, and I can uh, get back to working on this crux part because uh, we have a a truck that's going to be dropping. Um, I think like at the end of the year. So, I've been trying to film for this this part, and uh, I have a decent amount of footage already, but I need to like get those last tricks, get the ender and stuff and like finish that up. So I'm hoping to heal up so I can get back to that. Um, and like the dudes that, cause I work at that tattoo shop in the video that I went and got tattooed. I'm just like a yeah. shop helper. Um, get some free tattoos and get tipped out and stuff. It's pretty sick. <laughs> what, but, what's uh, that I, tattoo? What's that tattoo you got? Oh, the new one. I just got this one last night. Oh, what about the one on the video? Oh, that one's dope. Oh dude. yeah. That one. 
<laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, the dudes at the tattoo shop like designed the truck and stuff. Like when I first started uh, working there, I was pretty much like, well, got to like um, do something for this truck. And I didn't know like what artists I should get involved. I was like, might as well get them. Like I've always wanted to do kind of like a tattoo design inspired graphic of some sort. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Dude, that's sick, dude. And then where can people get your boards at, man? Like where like what skate shop? Where what website? Where can they go? Well, I'm sure I feel like they're at like most like local skate shops for the most part if they carry welcome. And then if not, you can just go on welcomeskateboards.com and they got them up there on the website. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. So did you hear that guys? Grab his board, man. Welcome grab skateboards. Board. Go your if skate shop don't have it, Aaron's board in. You tell the motherfuckers grab that shit, dude, because yes, this is the man right here. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, another thing too, do um do you have like a, a YouTube channel, a social media where people can find you and everything? Yeah, yeah. So I, well, I mean, my my main like Instagram is um, air air underscore Gordon, um, and then I got my music Instagram. It's kind of like weird, weirdly spelled because my music name is Doctor Thrax. Um, <laughs> what is it? Doctor Thrax. Oh, I like that, dude. With three X's, though. So <laughs> Instagram doesn't allow you to have three X's in your name because you I don't sure? know, they think it's like some porn shit or something, maybe. <laughs> so my Instagram one is like doctor, like spelled out, underscore, and then Thrax with one X, and then like dot X, dot X. So it's like <laughs> kind of just makes it a hassle to like promote it. But then all my music is also up on Spotify, and they let me, they let me do the three X's. So it's just DR Thrax with three X's. And That's then, awesome. Uh, I have, to, I, have to, I have to put your stuff on my road trip uh spotify man oh yeah check it out man it's funny like uh yeah we just like there's a bunch of like skater homies on there that are just like goofing around on a lot of the songs and like i think even like robbie brockle's got a track on there no so way really yeah yeah his oh, i gotta hear that hilarious. dude i gotta so hear funny. that man <laughs> yeah we'll just be recording and listening to it for the rest of the trip just cracking up <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Hell yeah. And one last thing. What can you say to the upcoming skaters? Anything you want to say to them? Inspiring, whatever? Um, don't try too hard. It <laughs> just like go have fun, man. Like too many people take take shit too serious. And that just that it's not just for skating, that's for everything, music, whatever you want to do. And like kind of like Tony was saying, man, like be yourself, dude. Like just do what anything that interests you and like you want to do, go after it and just don't give a fuck what anybody else thinks because there's always going to be somebody that's that not that's not down. You can't please everybody. So nope, that's, have fun with it. True. that's true, man. Definitely, definitely. Well, Aaron, congratulations on everything, man. And, Thank you, and man. Appreciate fast it. Thank recovery. You for me on. The pro board right here. Remember, guys, I got it the right way this time. Grab it, dude. Grab yes, it. Sir. Welcome to skateboards.com. Definitely, definitely. And hey, man, congratulations on the home and everything. Thank and you. thank you for coming on the show. And, you know, this is a wrap for TSM. That's a Live wrap, brother. Si uh, season five, episode five. I'm your host, Tommy Zam. I want to say thank you for all our sponsors for making this season happen. Thank you for our guests, Tony, Aaron, Matt, the electrician, everybody for coming on this show for our True Skateboard Mag Live show. Also, too, tune in next month for our season five, episode six, because that's just going to be crazy. But in the, in the meantime, sit back because I'm going to leave you guys with Matt Electrician. You! Cheers. Jeez. I remember waiting till the middle of the night to fall asleep. Falling like clutching to the sides of the boat that would carry me Out into the middle of a world where there's so little left to cling to Shadows by the side of the road with the evergreens Waiting on the flickering broken street
did awesome man thank you so much for coming on the show man hey, thanks for having us man thanks for having me man yeah, matt. matt that shit was awesome dude oh thanks man I, yeah. I was digging i was digging on your shit too man oh thanks dude really really loved listening to both of y'all talk and 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 digging the music and the and the tats and, and i'll have to look you I, I didn't get to see you skate aaron so i'll have to go off to oh go yeah dig in and, <laughs> and look for that. i know i mean the knee stuff it only gets worse oh <laughs> yeah yeah i know man yeah <laughs> Started when I was 17. I was like, I should be good for a while. Now, 26. I'm like, ah, oh, this is not a not getting off to a good start. Yeah, I'm so, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm about, I'm turning 50 this year, and 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 I I spend about an hour and a half stretching like before I even get out of bed. <laughs> I feel you, man. Oh, and Tony, man, that that footage was super sick too. The um those spots were sick. Like the one with the the white ride on grind rail. That shit was tight. Oh yeah, like I only skate crusty spots, man. Crustacean nation, bro. Yeah. When uh, 